uh, we are celebrating 25 years of parliamentary democracy in Ghana. And uh, Honorable Majority Leader, I think I'll start with you. You have been part of uh, all of these parliaments, have you? Not really. I joined Miss Fim in mm -hmm. 1997. Well, but that, so you missed only one. I missed one, not only one. I missed one. You missed one. And, and you <laughs> probably missed it because your party may have boycotted that uh, election. So, so yes, we can, you that can, is, there's a lot true. you can share with us. That is true, but um, I really wasn't part of the initial architecture for the party. I did not contest in the primaries in the lead up to the 1992 elections. So, from what you've seen, uh, what the really is the role of parliament in the whole governance architecture? We, we know that parliament makes laws and they debate and all of that. What, what is the real role that you've identified? The role that we play in parliament and parliament as an institution plays about four or five key ones. First, we are representatives of the people. We represent various constituencies. We represent various constituents. So the first is the representational role of uh, the member of parliament. I suppose that's why we are supposed to be in constant uh, discussion, constant conversation with your constituents and ferry their feelings, their aspirations to parliament. We deliberate on matters that come before us. And so by that, we inform the people of the country about happenings um, in the country and even without. So we have the deliberative function and also have the informational function. And because we are into deliberation, of course, you must, knowing that the deliberation will inform the populace, you must come from a very informed perspective yourself, you know, well-researched information that you should have um, to dissect whatever is presented to Parliament. So the deliberative, the informational function, and of course, as you have said, the legislative function, I'm arguably perhaps one of the best known functions of Parliament. We legislate, and that's why we are called legislators, and the House of Parliament is also called uh, the legislature. Then we have what is called the power of pairs function. During budget periods, we scrutinize the allocations, we scrutinize to see the connect between policy and programs and so on, and then allow government to spend that is the power of pairs function. When you have allocated monies or resources to government, you have then to step in to see whether the allocations are being properly utilized. That is the oversight function of parliament. We may also have increasingly some problem resolution functions. Petitions are presented to parliament. We also um, ratify international agreements. So that's also an essential component of it. Not to resurrect the Gitmo too, but <laughs> we 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 ratify treaties, conventions, protocols, and we approve of loan agreements as well. So multifaceted by the increasingly what Ghanaians are looking up to parliaments to do is emphasizing the problem resolution function of parliament. And this problem resolution translates oftentimes lately into the resolution of personal matters and that becomes a bit difficult people also expect you to be a development agent and uh, that's also another another area that we have to be I mean, you, have, you have given opinion on that this week haven't you i have that uh, mps are not development agents that's the position of the constitution but you have mps common fund <laughs> that's a development agency well that gives us money for development that is for or yeah dear politics what's your idea politics oh yeah dear i mean it's for patch patch business it's not for real <laughs> development. It's not for real development. It is for, for instance, like there's a, roof, a, 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 a rainstorm. The roof of uh, a school facility has been blown off, and you use it to repair it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a crack in a structure. Uh, oh, you are saying it's not for facility. monumental development. It's, like not roads. For it's not for real. roads. You cannot. You know uh, the cost uh, of constructing uh, a road uh, mm. now mm. in Ghana. One, one kilometer of um, double layered asphaltic road now is in the region of $1.7 million. Okay. One and kilometer. One kilometer. And assuming I don't use a penny of my common fund to do anything, 
I cannot. Who, in who three terms, in plan? three terms. Who checks it? Is that who, who supervises? Is it audited? It is. Your common fund. Absolutely. MPs, individual. Absolutely. Okay. I'll come back to that conversation. Honorable minority leader, they say that in parliament, the minority will always have their say and the majority have their way. What does that mean? How does that work in the Ghanaian parliament? In civilized democracies, every democracy has a minority. Mm. But not every government can have a parliament or have a minority. You can have a government which is uh, authoritarian. So parliament remains the citadel of democracy because it gives meaning to the very foundations of freedom of speech and freedom of expression. So it is expected that in every parliament, which is divided into two sides, the majority party, which is a party with the largest number in parliament, and the minority party defined as a party with least numbers compared to the majority party, because don't forget that there can be several minority parties. And then debate. Uh, largely, the minority will have their say. They cannot have their way because when it comes to voting, the majority will have their way by way of voting in terms of the numbers. But uh, it has evolved that in many instances you can build consensus, you can build cooperation, and you can have a national consensus on some of these uh, matters. But the space for the minority to have its say will jealously, jealously, and religiously be protected and safeguarded at all times for the good of democracy. But people get because frustrated with that. Just as the majority leader said, no, parliament has a deliberative function. The, in that deliberative function is a debate. So that, uh, for instance, this uh, afternoon, there was a standard of exchange of information uh, ratification bill. Uh, you must allow parliament and members of parliament to vent their ideas, what they think can be done good to improve that kind of bill. So it means that in every democracy, the majority will naturally, if their vote is to go their way, because they have the numbers comfortable, they may be able to do as they please. But the minority must be given space to oppose, to exercise oversight, which means constructive uh, opposition. Other than that, as democracy evolves today, I'm sure the majority leader will be comfortable to say, hey, Haruna, so the minority, what alternative measure do you have? So we've gone beyond just opposing to say that I disagree. But in order that you must also be ready to provide an alternative, uh, that this is how uh, it could have been done or it could be done better this way. And uh, I think that uh, in Ghana, uh, he's already intimated to you. The most important function vested in the Parliament of Ghana by virtue of Article 93 is a legislative power. And mm -hmm. I've always insisted, like many others, that unlike Westminster, in Ghana, Parliament is not sovereign. So that's why the Constitution says that subject to this Constitution or subject to other provisions in the Constitution, Parliament shall. So it means that Parliament, in the exercise of its legislative function, must be wary and mindful, for instance, against Article 2 and 3, that if Parliament takes a decision which is void or unconstitutional, the judiciary, as a check on Parliament, can declare that particular law and nullity. So Ghana, we are evolving from 1993 up to date. 25 years he's been, uh, he and Alban Sumana Bagwin, uh, I think Bagwin leads him with one term, mm -hmm. but they belong to the generation of MPs who should be celebrated. Professor Michael Kui keep insisting that he doesn't want you to refer to the Honorable Chairman or Bagwin as a Mugabe. Because he wants people with good examples in terms of uh, 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 their loyalty longevity. and respect. So then, not then just Queen Elizabeth, a matter of then. longevity, mm. but respect to democratic values and its principles. That is his view. So probably you want to say that he's a McCain. He's done more years in the U.S. Congress <laughs> or others. But I think that our parliament have evolved. Mm. I see... I was going to bring you back to the alternative that you said minorities should provide. If that is so, recently there was brouhaha in Parliament when there was a minority opinion on the, uh, the committee, the controversial committee, or the committee that was set to investigate the controversial matter of the cash for seats. And, uh, and, and there was concern about a minority report. But you talk here now about 
the minority having an alternative but is that a different situation no, no. you'll be mixing apples with uh, you'll be mixing the issues now if parliament also exercises an investigative function and that is done through the committees of parliament and parliament can investigate any matter of public national interest or public concern there were those allegations of sale of seats to which parliament appointed a committee to look at it the committee ought to work within the standing orders and the rules of parliament in the report there could have been the minority view in that particular report that's that if you read the Vodafone uh, matter and many other matters. If the minority feels strong about any particular issue, you can state your position at the committee level. But I think that the members of the committee themselves did not cooperate with each other. And that probably explains why that happened, that you had a one-standing minority report. So that shouldn't have report, happened. That shouldn't have happened under normal circumstances. All of them ought to work together and agree on. I recall that one of the days we had uh, uh, invited the chairman to have a meeting with Dr. Ayeni and so on his colleagues at 4 p.m. I'm told that it didn't happen. That is where maybe they could have cured many of those uh, issues. So when you say parliament exercising its investigative function, don't forget that throughout the world, governments will protect themselves from embarrassing things, particularly matters bordering on corruption, because it lowers their standing and integrity. So there will always be efforts by government not to want it investigated or through investigation, not to want the reality known. It is akin to every other government, not just uh, uh, Ghana. In every democracy, government is careful. Because uh, in Ghana, as we listen to the Honorable Martin Amidu, if you look at the successive military interventions, they've all used corruption as justification for coming in to uh, get those uh, uh, military interventions succeed, albeit not good for the growth and development of the country, but justified because of their claim mm. that there is abuse of public processes for private personal gain and there is uh, public officials taking advantage of citizens and uh, dissipating public resources in a manner that it should not do. But I don't think your, the example fits in into okay. this particular the uh, of the house. Uh, issue. One of the aspects of Parliament's work that gets a lot of public attention is consideration and vetting of ministers and appointees. Recently, Martin Amidu's vetting generated significant interest. People wonder, why are you not a member of that committee? Of the appointment committee. <laughs> that committee that asks people questions when the president <laughs> nominates them. First of all, you don't want to be there? Um, the, by our own architecture, mm -hmm. the first deputy speaker chairs the appointment committee. Yeah. And the minority leader would usually be there as the he ranking member. member. Yeah, ranking I used member. to be there. Let, let's understand but as the that. Majority leader, what's ranking member? They hear it all the time on the news. The ranking member is the Shadow. opposition. Shadow. In other jurisdictions, okay. they will say the opposition spokesperson. For that committee. For that committee. We so, don't call ours opposition. So ranking member of communications committee is always a minority person. Yes. From the minority. For the minority. So he's the number two in the committee. He's the, he's the number two in the committee. Okay. And we don't call ours opposition, um, opposition member. Because, you see, that characterization is, um, you know, uh, typical of the Westminster system. Mm. Because in the, West, <coughs> in the Westminster system, <coughs> the opposition sp spokesperson, the shadow minister, mm -hmm. would usually emerge once his party wins as mm -hmm. the more or less the automatic the minister, yeah. minister. Ours is different. Ours is a combination of the presidential and the, and the uh, Westminster. So you may not necessarily become the, the uh, minister in the sector that you shadow. And that is why we call ours ranking, just as in the in the in the US. Now um, you ask where, why I'm not. Why are you not a member of that? Yes, that because important committee. All committees are important. Uh, it's well, all, that's the it's one that only has because the biggest interaction with people, and that's where people it's actually value because, and judge. It's only because by our, by our own structure, the appointment committee is the only one that is charged, in fact, authorized statutorily to have public hearing. Mm -hmm. All the others don't. Okay. We have opened up space Public a bit. Too, that's we, but it's not statutory. Okay. In fact, that that um, that resort was allowed under Felix Usue Japan when he was the majority leader. Mm. So we allowed that, even though um, the the statute, our rules, 
don't allow for that. They don't really prohibit it. But it's only the Public Accounts Committee, uh, the Appointment Committee, that is charged with the power to have public hearings. We are opening up. Uh, in fact, we have also granted uh, on more than one occasion the Government Assurances Committee also to have public hearings. And now, most recent, this special committee that, that was set up. But just to, just to um, you know, continue from where my colleague left off, uh, with respect to what happened um, in, the, in, the, in, in that committee, the rules don't allow for a separate report to be written by anybody, whether it is from the minority group or an individual, whether the person could even be with the majority, but he decides to step out and write his own report. The, the rules don't allow for that. What the rules allow for is for, and I think that, was, that fact was lost on many of my colleagues, what the rules allow for is for the chairman to write a report predicated on the transaction of business in the committee. And then after they have finished, the chairman would invite all others and submit the report to them. If you have anything to be added, you bring it there. If you, have, if you want to amend anything, you call for it. And then consensually, you agree. Somebody may insist that, no, 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 I think this thing happened, and I would want to side with this opinion. But if you insist and the chairman says, I can't accept it. No, no, no. So in that case, it will be written into, into the report that this is what you wanted. maybe one member mm. insisted on this, and then it would be part of the report. But it shouldn't happen that somebody steps out to write his report and says to the rest of them that I have my minority report but that means that under my ambit. It, it means it that, the, that the parliamentary records will not record that report, will it? No. Okay. Once so, you so step out to say that you have your own yeah, report, so, so the, an, then an what MP, happens? An MP should be at liberty to do then that. Then what happens? Be recorded, he can hold a press conference and share. What happens there mm -hmm. is that if you insist on your own report, then the chairman will table the report, beginning with his own report. Mm -hmm. And then they vote on each one of them. Mm -hmm. That is the procedure. So you can't go out there and say that well, I have my own report. You have your own report. Parliament is supposed to act MP, consensually. He's, he's the epitome of representation of his mm. people. And so he knows that this will not be carried by either the Hansard or the official report. But he can hold a press conference in fidelity to the people who elected him there. Now when I went to the committee, this is what I found. Can't yes. he do that? He could do that to the extent mm. that he will not deliberately distort the, the facts. Act, the facts. Mm. You okay. can't do that. You are not. You are not. But are not you, entitled you, you, to you your own of using <coughs> unparliamentary language in that process. That that you you, you described one of your your colleagues in language that they said was unparliamentary. Which which was? I, I don't know what the language is, but my question really is: What is unparliamentary language? Well, if you use offensive, mm. insulting language. Mm attacking the character. So if you say that something somebody has said is not sensible, that's all parliamentary. <laughs> it depends on the context of usage. Oh, context. Yes, it depends. Okay. I mean, when somebody says that, like the other day, and let me quote myself, mm. I said... Before I quote him, <laughs> before rubbish. Quote him. <laughs> okay. Rubbish. It's what, what, yes. He said, said rubbish. No, I didn't say rubbish. Okay. I guess that my colleagues didn't, 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 didn't hear me. Yeah, what did I you said say? somebody had brought up something, mm. and that matter had been rubbished. Oh, okay. It was the okay. very form of the noun yeah, rubbish. Yeah, you were describing it. Yes. Okay. So what I meant by that in the context was that the matter had been severely criticized and rejected. Okay, it had okay. Been so rubbish. you misunderstood. Yeah, I was misunderstood. No, still, and somebody said it was, it was, was the language was offensive. It was so so <laughs> the other thing that people don't so understand is so that somebody that does something in parliament as rubbish. No, that, that is not No, I didn't say I didn't that say that can, can what I, he said was, leadership, <coughs> was rubbish. I said when, it was when rubbish. When somebody does something in parliament that is not good or people think it's not good, we always hear you say referred to privileges committee. But the word privilege carries some, you know, high profile well treatment kind of thing but <laughs> so we, we want to we want to hear sanctions committee or something like that but you say privileges committee what does that committee do we have we have privileges mm -hmm. and immunities granted to us mm -hmm. if you abuse the privileges and immunities oh that's that when you ordinary, go to the privileges yes committee. that's why we call it privileges committee some others call it privileges and immunities committee mm. some others call it ethics committee Mm. So I think we have opted to use the word privileges mm. 
um, just as obtains in, in, in the Westminster system. Okay. Before I come to you, Honorable Arona, so majority leader, the, the concern people have is as majority leader, when you take a bill or when a bill comes to parliament from your government, you are 1,000 percent sure that it will be passed. That's the concern people have. They think that this undermines the whole democracy process. Anytime the majority leader goes to parliament or is championing a bill from his government, 1,000 percent to be passed. Not, can can not something sure. change with that? No, 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 you're not sure about what you're saying. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure about what you're saying. I'm I'll sure. tell you, mm. I'll tell you mm. that, you see, the bill, the passage of a bill has three stages. Yes. We have what is called the, the first reading, where the bill comes to be introduced in Parliament. Mm. Then we do the second reading, mm. at which time we deliberate on the memorandum. Yeah. The, um, from the, the committee. From the committee. The memorandum would usually come from the sponsoring authority. Okay. But the committee then, having... Um, attended to the hearings and so on, will come with their own report, right? And so the motion will be moved by the sponsoring authority, usually a minister, mm. that this is the principle underpinning this bill, the policy underpinning this bill, and for which reason we are bringing this act for you, this bill for you to craft for us. Now, you would, you would be amazed that in all bills that come to Parliament, when it comes to proposing amendments, amendments are usually led by the minority party. Mm -hmm. When I was in the minority, okay, so the I was bill, a champion. The bill changes form by the time it's ready to be passed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And most okay. of the time, the amendments are proffered by the minority. Mm. And, because they as he said, mm. as, and they are accommodated. As he said, you see, a government is elected to discharge some obligations. Okay, so when the bill is the passed, we should understand it as having been passed by all. By the entire Absolutely. house. Ah, I see. By the entire house. Mm. And that's why I, I told you that you're not sure of what you're saying. Mm. Okay. <laughs> because okay. most amendments, apart from what the committee itself will sponsor, will come from, you know, members who ordinarily would not even belong to the majority side. Because the power of scrutiny, the minority would usually have time to scrutinize. Mm. You think that because it's coming from your own government, you relax a bit. But most amendments, apart from what the committee itself will sponsor, will come from the minority. And that's the beauty of democracy. Let's the talk majority about leader, you pose a question to about the majority having their way and the minority having their say. Yeah. You see, it is, it is even relative. Democracy itself, one must understand, is majoritarian rule. Mm. Every democracy... The it's tyranny not, of the majority. It's, it's, no, it's not the tyranny of the majority. Mm. Otherwise, As that's what we have to guide against. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we must guide against. Yeah. But that is why he said, as much as possible, we'll try to be consensual. And before we get to the house, before we get to the chamber, if there are difficult issues, I'll call him. That what do you think about this? We dialogue behind the curtains. Sometimes, okay, so you put stuff dictated together. by policy, mm. he'll tell you, oh, but this is why we cannot support. So, so, by, the time so you arm you, yourself. by the time we are watching you on TV, mm -hmm. when you are taking your turns on a debate, you already have discussions behind the scenes. Most times. <laughs> Most times. But that's kind of deceptive on our own ideas. People not. watch you and uh, it's not. NDC are cheering you, MPP are cheering him, <laughs> yes. but you don't tell us that you've spoken in the that's, morning before. It reflects the diversity <laughs> of uh, parliamentary So he gets to know what you will be saying? Not really, no. Not but really, he has an no, idea. No. At least on the subject matter. For example, we are coming to debate special prosecutor. He would have read the policy principles as I have done. Mm. Then I'll pick and choose mm -hmm. what I want to debate in the context of fighting corruption. And then I lead the discussion the way I want. So when you stand but up and the instance, speaker says, Honorable Minority Leader, the majority then has an idea of what you're going to say. No, <laughs> but at least he has an idea that the policy principles borders on this. If we are talking about corruption, you can't come talking about the environment. Mm. Other than mm. that, he raised issue of relevance, which yeah. is part of the standing order. But I think what is more important, Paul, is to appreciate that the Parliament of Ghana, like many other parliaments, including Westminster, is governed by rules which is referred to as the standing orders. So the matter of privilege and immunity are uh, matters guaranteed under the Constitution. For instance, what a member of parliament says on the floor of parliament, you want to hold him against that? No. Mm -hmm. That would be breach of privilege. That's Let's try and understand that so people get it. So whatever you say on the floor of the house, yes. you cannot, it cannot be held against you. Absolutely. And whatever you say in the presence of parliament, 
it cannot. But presence of parliament not as weighty as on the floor of on parliament floor when you are recorded. So on, on the, the floor house. of the house, you can it say anything about, you have about done President Akufuado and you get away with no, it. No, but you must still be civil and you must be within the rules, mm -hmm. not insulting, factual, but state it as it is. If there's a policy disagreement you have with the president, why not? Mm -hmm. You state it as it is. That I but disagree you cannot be sued. With the president, no, on that basis you cannot. Mm -hmm. Except where you unjustifiably had uh, reputation. But that's why I'm saying that within the rules, the rules does not permit you to go to head reputation or character with your comment. But I think I want to come back to the matter of public account and appointments committee. And I believe that he is very supportive. We just got back from uh, out, at, at, out of Accra to work on new standing orders for the Parliament of Ghana. Okay. And we are resolved collectively uh, championed by many of them, including Alban Bagbin, the Honorable Muntaka, and the previous speakers of parliament, including the current speaker, to have a dedicated standing orders which strengthens parliamentary accountability and transparency. So part of the transparency would be not just public accounts and appointments committee, but all other committees of parliament must make their work they, they public. public. They should sit public. And we can film that it is when the electorate can appreciate mm. what members of parliament do other than taking part in the debate. We had a visit last week from Uganda, of the appointments committee from Uganda, uh, our chairman, Joe uh, Osewusu, presided over the meeting. It was exciting hearing from the Ugandan experience. There is no public sitting, no public hearing. Somebody just walks to parliament and announces that you have been approved or disapproved. The, so the, the, Ghana, I think yeah. that between 1993 and 1997, subsequent to the locus classicus you read, uh, J. Mensa mm -hmm. versus Attorney mm -hmm. General as an authority of pre-approval, the appointments committee of parliament have improved mm -hmm. beyond just a parliamentary resolution into scrutiny. And I've been minded by a quote of a congresswoman, I hope that I get the name right, Margaret, who says that when the appointments committee sits, you look at intellectual standing, mm -hmm. you look at temperament, mm -hmm. you look at subject matter, whether the person understands the kind of work he's coming to do, you look also into moral turpitude as a requirement of the 1992 constitution and character vis-a-vis -vis the law. Mm. So, for instance, <coughs> we want to find out whether you are a citizen of Ghana or you hold allegiance to any other republic. You that sometimes ask a if minimum. You sometimes ask if the, the person is married. Absolutely. It's married. Why is that important? Oh, married maybe to know your social ties, maybe to lead you to the temperament. Mm. If at age 40, 45, you are not married, there must be something wrong with you. <laughs> in my view, I can be wrong. <laughs> but if I'm 40, 45 years, yeah, and you cannot, you cannot keep uh, a, a wife, a wife mm. uh, we probably must be asking why if you don't have biological problems. But you never problems. turn down any of these appointees. <laughs> yes. Everyone who goes to Burton, no matter how grueling the Burton is, no matter how Paul, quarrelsome it is. Paul, I said that as an inherent weakness of Ghana's parliamentary democracy. He will come to it. There are specific instances where the president have had to withdraw some nominations based Happened on the advice of it. Ago. But not parliament itself sticking out and saying that and we And turning down this appointee. This. Yes. You are right on that. It's never we happened. We need to improve That's upon it. Place. But that, be okay, I'll come to that, that is because I'll yield that to him, Paul. The weakness of Ghana's parliament is that oversight is largely a minority function than a parliamentary function in Ghana. When it comes to asking ministers questions, members of the ruling party, both NDC and PBC in 1993, are not interested in the scrutiny of ministers because of the embarrassment that comes in the wake of it, statements and others. So a general weakness of Ghana's parliamentary democracy is oversight. Mm -hmm. It is exercised more by the opposition minority than every other member of parliament. Mm -hmm. But you can understand, as he said, the nature of our democracy. There are even instances that, as a minister, you may feel very strongly about a particular bill. Mm -hmm. But because you have policy approval to that particular uh, uh, bill, uh, maybe I should use this example. When uh, the Ghana Exim Bank was mm -hmm. going to be established, yeah. which was a transformation of EDIF, I worked with EDIF as Minister for Trade and Industry. I felt very strongly that under no circumstance should the Ghana Exim Bank be run by the Minister of Finance? Because the Minister for Trade <coughs> is the Minister for the Economy. Mm -hmm. He needs that resources. 
in order to expand import, uh, ex sorry, in order to expand exports mm -hmm. and to reduce import. He needs that intervention to support industry, maybe protect infant uh, local industry. And but this bill was brought by the NDC. No, it's I exempted. know, yes. And the NDC brought it in a manner that it was largely under the Minister for Finance. Yeah. I'm just stating that I had an objection, and my objection was that no, this should be Ministry for Trade and Industry. So I went further even to sponsor an amendment that the chairmanship for the board should be the Minister for Trade and Industry. But that failed, obviously. Absolutely. Mm. But it's a weakness of our democratic practice, as I have said. Mm. And uh, sometimes you must garner a lot of courage to be able to do that. Because now, how can Ghana exam sit under the Ministry of Finance, then the Minister of Trade? Uh, is weakened mm -hmm. and he does not have the resources to support industry now when every day I hear Ghana this uh, epileptic fall of the city we say monetary and what policy the solution in getting a strong city is expanded exports yeah. nothing more long term but, that's what you that must sort of, invest in that sort of leads but us you to have, finance no but it? no no that's a trade function in mm -hmm. many jurisdictions the minister for trade is the minister for the economy Finance is just revenue and expenditure and managing mm. the fiscal. Mm. The real ministry for the economy, in my view, is the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Mm. And we need to take a second look at it. Maybe this uh, 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 Ghana exam thing, the uh, administration may want to take a look at it. Now, if you take okay. public accounts, they've done very well, but the end product is what we've not been able to manage well. What happens to the recommendations of the Public Accounts Committee? I think that in the special prosecutor bill, we've managed something, but that is not enough. I recall again when we came to special prosecutor, I had sponsored that recommendations of PAC based on parliament must be matters which is referred to the special prosecutor. Again, the weakness of Ghana's parliamentary democracy, I'm not sure I won that particular uh, 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 amendment or it was stood down because it was mixed up in other. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, language to accommodate it but I strongly felt that it was a matter we should stand alone as our commitment because from 1993 to yesterday we all see the leakages from the Auditor General, General Report. Yeah. Billions and billions of cities every other year. Systems need to be corrected and systems Apparently people work. should be prosecuted. That the law Indeed, said that. But we don't when do I, that. I discussed one of it with the majority leader as he said we consult and his view was that in Australia or somewhere as he mentioned the Auditor General even has a seat in Parliament. So maybe Parliament must see the Auditor General as an ally in our quest and effort to combat corruption. And we must work very, very closely with the Auditor General yeah. and strengthen internal... Le Leader, do you also I'm observe sure some weaknesses in the system? As he has, he has just pointed out, at least two weaknesses in the system. The oversight, which is carried out, he says, usually by a minority, uh, if that could change. And, uh, and also the appointment, the... the, the uh, the, the committee the um, first of all let me let me cite examples of people who have been uh, rejected by rejected the the appointment committee. Yes. my Ministers. own my own uh, brother the honorable collins in tia jacko remember in 1993 collins you, in tia jacko yes what, what was uh, he called uh, why, why, was, why was he rejected eventually he was rejected because of uh, i think an inquiry into his own educational uh, no, but that's a technical point. Yes, I'm saying that. What the people are looking for is to interview a minister and say that he's not qualified for the job. Yes, I'm saying. N not based te on not what? technically. They, they based on what you have assessed according as to them, According to them, they, they stood him down for reasons of uh, committing perjury because yeah. what he has said was... He, he tendered was certification that could not be verified. He made that a statement. Okay. That could not be verified. That's technical. That, then, that one, then, remember, then remember uh, Spio Gabra. No, you said to us that nobody has been come. rejected. Okay. Spio Gabra. Mm -hmm. um, then there's this. Spio other Gabra was rejected because he wasn't a registered voter. Absolutely. Would have known. Would have known. It, well, that exposure came before the appointment committee. Yes, it did. Yeah. One or second for. A question uh, was asked to Spio Gabra. Yes. And he said that he's not a registered voter. Yes, I'm saying that. Which How is, could that which exposure have come? Legal but for, but for yes, yes. So the, yes. No, but that one we can't attribute it to Parliament because who the person was not to? Why you pose that question? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, for, one or okay. second for a, a member of uh, Parliament for MIM mm. in the Brown House constituency. He was one of the appointees, the nominees mm. by President Kufuor. He got rejected mm. by Parliament. 
So there have been instances. Then there was this other guy, um, light-skinned guy. Yeah. I've forgotten the name. Okay. He also, he also got, got rejected. rejected. So, um, so you have some numbers. So we have some numbers. But okay. um, the issue that you raised about the, the oversight function, arguably the best vehicle to conduct oversight is the committee system. And the committee system in Parliament is not as strong as it should be. For instance, when we come to um, the appointment committee, when the appointment committee vets elsewhere in the US, they vet for specific appointment mm -hmm. to a specific sector. Mm -hmm. So they test your competence at the place, your versatility, your human relations, everything. But here in Ghana, we can't dwell so much on your competence in the field. Why not? Why? Because there's a possibility that you may, you may be nominated for a position. Parliament does the vetting. And the following day, you may not even get sworn into that ministry. The president may decide to take you elsewhere. It has happened. And but will the vetting that, stand in that case? Yes. OK, so. That um, is what we should avoid. OK, so someone no, the, so the rules allow Mr. X to be nominated for Ministry of Information. Yes. He's vetted for that. For information. But then the president appoints him to Ministry of Agriculture. Foreign Affairs. Yes. And that's allowed. Without recourse to power. Without recourse to power. That's oh, what really? happens in Ghana. Yes. That's what happens in Ghana. Well, yeah, is, by what? The constitution or what, by what rules? And that is what Once we should you are a minister, you are a minister. Once People you are a minister, are, that is what you are deemed. Oh, but. And that, that is what I think the Supreme Ghana, Court yeah. has moving something to say forward. about it. No, no. That moving forward. Moving forward. Parliament should stop that. Parliament should come together and stop that. And that what do you need to would do to allow stop? us, I mean, coming together. Because uh, but the letter we, that comes resolve, to the speaker has yes. names and designations. Yes. So you vet a minister designate for information. But the president reshuffles without the person coming back to that Yeah, reshuffle committee. can be understood. But Why? No, understood by the from same where principle. Where? By the same from principle. Agri but in America, the president reshuffles as well. Does he have precautions? They come back. Or oh, you come back to, yes. Congress, to yes. be better specifically, specifically for, for that. If you well, were at if you, have the, if you have the competence there. But what, why is it difficult for us to do that? That is what we haven't done. And I'm why, saying why that, we done that he's identified a weakness. So let's <laughs> so let's <improve. laughs> it's something that the reshuffle syndrome. Yeah. Because now in Ghana, it's possible to vet somebody as a minister for horticulture. Yeah. And the following day, or one week after he is made the Minister of Finance. Or gender. You know, <laughs> and it's something that really shouldn't wow. be happening. I see this interesting. Very, yes. very interesting. And so we, 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 it's one of the things that we are, we are trying to resolve. The Through the review, standing order, I mean. The review yes, yes, that yeah. we did. Now we are bringing the numbers down, of the committee down. So you now have maybe the leadership of parliament. Plus, if you are nominated, the leadership of the sector committee to come and join the leadership of parliament. Okay, so that's reconstituted the appointments place. committee. Yes, not only that, all the committees. Okay, so if I'm nominated committee. for Minister of Foreign Affairs, majority of those who will be vetting are, will be are, from, are the from the committee from the committee. Foreign, foreign Affairs. affairs. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So now that is where we are moving. That's nice. And then, of course, we are also bringing the numbers down such that... Would you also consider bringing civil society into it on a non-scoring basis? No, oh, that's not allowed. No parliament allows like that. Sharing, no, no, no parliament allows that. Okay. It's well, the Ghana why, can start. It's the reason why you elect a representative. Yeah. And yeah. that is the reason why you should also elect the proper person to be your representative. Okay, that works. And, and another thing maybe mm -hmm. should also be the capacity of the members of parliament themselves. By what you are doing, the, the various political parties are doing to themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, increasingly peeling off members from parliament. Now, you may, he mentions. Oh, you are talking about the, the contest at the at the constituency level. The the the, the way of uh, at the constituency level mm -hmm. that is uh, resulting in uh, you know jettisoning many members of. You parliament. want us to be like England, where we say that Harun Idris is our star, so let him be there. That is not that is not what obtains in England. What obtains in England so. is they mark you by your track record, your performance in yes. parliament, and they don't and the leadership and the leadership of your party. Yeah then would come to some determination that because this is a very good material for us, mm -hmm. if he has not done anything that would bring the image good, of the good party into the dispute. Saw the way he was challenging his own primaries. Yeah. In which, yeah. in so, which I mean, in, 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 in UK, the speaker... Yeah, they do that in UK, but does that not undermine the elective principle? Every democracy is know. guided and guarded. There's no democracy that is an all comers game. People should understand that. And that is so, the reason this, why... this will be internal party regulations. Precisely. That's why I'm addressing the parties. Yeah. Both MPP and NDC in the main. The two main political parties. They are not behaving well. And I think that 
they should attend to that. Because, for instance, now in Parliament, the MPP has about 169 members of Parliament. Mm. Of the 169, close to 90 are new members of Parliament. New? Yes, freshers. Four years back, we had 122. And 63 were new members of Parliament. How do you grow Parliament that way? How do you even did grow your democracy? How do you grow your party? But it's your principal responsibility as an MP, not to your constituents. And therefore, if you're not able to impress your constituents, they vote they you have out. The so right to change they, so have your, they have the right. Sovereign will accept, in their people. Yes. Accept. Yes. So accept. That's your principal accept. Market. Yeah. Accept. People are getting the purpose of the elections wrong in the first place. What are you electing the person? Well, what are you electing the person to do? I mean, you you went through this last year. So Everyone saying, was disappointed what are you to hear that you were being challenged. Yes. You went on radio and boldly said that this is a game between Messi and, and <laughs> because you you knew your relationship with your electorate. You were confident that your competences would show. And when the results came, you had won a landslide. I'm saying. So why can't other people win landslides? No, they, I'm saying that I'm winning? saying that increasingly, the focus is shifting on what people expect from their members of parliament. Okay. It's not about what you do in Parliament, the legislative ability of the person, the competence that you display in oversighting the executive, maybe the, 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 the information that you churn out, mm -hmm. informed as you are, the deliberative function, your, the power of eloquence, mm -hmm. and persuasion and convincing people to go along. They are not looking at that. They are looking at, oh, uh, how much money did he give? They're looking precisely. at largesse. Precisely. How much Should that be the saying? determinant? It shouldn't be. Should that be good? Yeah. I'm happy you are a convert. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Unfortunately, that is where the drift is to us. And that's why I'm saying that we should be but careful But it's also based on going. promises. I mean, people compete for MPship and promise a lot. Some people. But let me come to you on about Some civil people. society <laughs> has a big disappointment about the Ghanaian parliament over the last three parliaments, about the fact that the Freedom of Information Bill has failed in three parliaments. In, Can we get a commitment of sorts? In our last effort to get it passed, they had just uh, won an election and they would not cooperate with then majority. Oh, really? Yes, he's here. In December, he last led, year? Yes, he led, he led the process. Don't oh, it was them, them MPP that, that didn't cooperate to get this done. I, I recall that. No, we can go to the vote. No, I was on the floor of parliament when the Honorable Duajao introduced it. It had gone to consideration stage, and indeed, it had gone to where even I had filed an amendment. Mm -hmm. And when he moved, uh, leader, at the time you were a minority leader, you gave a signal that there will be no cooperation to get it passed. Whatever it is, there was commitment to work at it. The answer is there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm making reference that this was a position. But so when we must they blame the MPP for the last failure. No, no, it's taking Ghana too long to pi pass the right to information bill, mm. and I think that is such an important legislation. I've always maintained and insisted that uh, corruption hates uh, sunshine. Mm -hmm. So that's why freedom for freedom of freedom for right to right information to and other related bills like ethics bill are normally called the sunshine laws mm -hmm. because they provide an opportunity to so is it going to get passed transparency and accountability i think that we had a meeting with mm -hmm. the president even today i spoke to him and he indicated that even today it was raised in our concluding remarks on the state of the nation's address and there's some assurance indeed there is a letter from the attorney general mm -hmm. which hints of that and uh, and a constitutional instrument for the judicial service. Mm -hmm. She intends to bring those legislations to mm. Parliament. So let's see okay. when it comes what we can do. <laughs> but civil society also contributed to So Paul, we're observing 25 years of parliamentary democracy. Yeah, I'll, I'll come to the last Canada. one. Let me ask Lida something. Lida, last year, when you were minority leader, there was a dramatic U-turn that you made in a particular uh, amendment, which I, I want to ask you about. The amendment of the Constitution on the day of voting, there was sufficient... Um, advocacy generated around 7th November mm -hmm. and then when it came onto the floor of the house there's a very dramatic U-turn that's that you and your group made to uh, deny the numbers to change the date from 7th December to 7th November if what I'm saying is true what really informed that first of all, couldn't ask because we're in the heat of the election first of all let me uh, respond quickly to some issues raised by my colleague yeah. mm -hmm. the right to information yes yes what really happened there were there were some some two major bumps Okay. One related to the location of the a center to receive and 
uh, fan out information, whether there should be a central location or mm -hmm. such. Then the other also related to what information to classify as national security. Which will be excluded from. Which will be excluded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was like most of the information that on the face of it we thought the public should have access to. Um, the bill had a way of withdrawing, clawing them back. I was not too happy about it. Those were the two major things that delayed it. And when we came, the speaker signaled that, well, let's begin from somewhere. Let's get it passed. If the next administration is going to have it amended, so be it. And we said no. That was the point that so I that was the reason. Okay. That was the reason. Now, the other about the breaking the, yeah. the date from 7th December to 7th November. November. People would understand that I had even said that the amendment should synchronize with the date of election for the president. Mm -hmm. The date for, of the uh, election for the president is not even um, tied to 7 November. It is three months before his own coronation. That takes us back to October. Mm -hmm. So the, October, the, the elections could hold from 7th October through November to December. And I said we should amend the parliamentary one to be in tandem with that. But you see, elections are about predictability. Mm. Political parties plan their own calendar. And we have been saying this all the time. Mm. The Electoral Commission waits. And then, about three months of the election, spring this on us as a surprise. You can't do that. Elections should, the program should be known. The calendar should be known by all political parties one clear year into the election year. So that was our, the oh, point of this was comfort. coming too late. Yes, okay. it was coming too late. Otherwise, mm. the principle was acceptable. As I'm saying, we started by saying that we should amend the parliamentary elections to be in, tandem, to be in sync with that. So that if you are doing uh, November for the presidential, you do November for parliamentary. The same. That's what we have, yes. yes. Was that not what the amendment was saying? No, the amendment, the amendment brought it back. It brought forward, it forward. Forward to November. By, by November to November. And, not and I said, in principle, nobody was against it. For a runoff. Yeah. Nobody was against it. And we said that it should even come forward all the more. Except that you don't wait three months of elections. In any event, when they said they were ready, when they said they were ready, one month before the elections, they came running to us, the special budget committee, uh, yeah. the letter committee. They wanted more money. To tell us that they, they didn't have sufficient money. Mm -hmm. When they said they would be ready so, for November. So even if we, November you Senate. voted, they couldn't have done it? Uh, absolutely. Let, let's talk about what people are asking about. And let me start with how you do. So let's talk about money. Is it is it profitable to be a member of parliament? Should I want to be a member of parliament? If I examine do you, do you want to? and watch, I'm asking to advise you. If I examine <laughs> and watch, and you are encouraged anyway okay. to, uh, you make a good member of parliament. As to how you serve your constituents, that will be as in your own words a fair judgment between the electorate mm. and how you carry yourself about, both in parliament, outside parliament, and at the constituency level. In Ghana, there seem to be a lot of weight place on the opportunity of being member of parliament. I should indicate that the hybrid constitution of 1992 have not held the role of an MP well. So Ghanaian members of parliament, we suffer a crisis of identity as to whether we are development agents or not. We ourselves campaign as development agents and come to parliament and want to keep that away because of our inability to honor mm. and meet the promises and pledges that we make. Uh, by way of status, an honorable person, honorable <laughs> member of parliament with privilege and immunity is a high respectable office, political office. So for purpose of social stratification, mm. you may want to be a member of parliament. But it should be ultimate about public service and not about how much money you have made or acquired or how much money you are spending. Uh, suffice it to add that our democracy is threatened today with uh, money politics. Uh, how you get elected as member of parliament, you need to spend uh, lots of money sometimes how do we justify the money that we spend and how we, 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 we make it? But if I look at the life of former members of parliament, I will not advise you to want to be a member of parliament. Mm. Uh, the life of many members of parliament, as you get into that high office, your taste will change 
and probably after four or eight years when you are not able to sustain the faith and confidence of the electorate you are on your own as an ordinary person why would my taste but change are there some have, big things in there that no will no you would have learned, my taste you would have you would have you would have learned to spend a common fund and when you don't have a common fund to spend what do you do when there are interventions that you want to do <laughs> i think uh, paul let's not pretend <laughs> when you're a member of parliament in ghana it's not just about the road drawing attention to it by fixing it yourself it's yeah. not about the toilet by fixing it yourself yeah. it's not about the dam uh, as i speak to you this evening i have a request from kakpaile in tamale that i must desult the dam and uh, the threat is that i should start tomorrow Oh, I, I, want, I want the vote. Is it better and to be a minister and member of parliament? You have been both. Uh, it has served our purpose no, given for the individual our member of parliament. history, mm -hmm. but it does not allow you to focus as member of parliament. Many of us will give the executive more weight mm -hmm. in terms of your ministerial role. That itself is weightier and more. Uh, the responsibility there is huge, mm -hmm. depending <coughs> upon what portfolio you serve in. Again, that has not allowed for an effective check and balance and effective exercise of oversight because you have ministers who are also members of parliament. So that makes the separation of powers mm -hmm. a disjoint and that is problematic. Maybe we have to look uh, uh, at it. So minister, MP have served our purpose. But if you look at the constitutional review uh, process, you would come to accept the fact that we need to separate the two. Let this category be ministers. Let members of parliament. So be we go back to say the 79 constitution. Probably ministers are or ministers. probably even to work if towards. If that were so, which one would you work choose? Towards a second if it were so, which one would you choose? I've, I'm enjoying the role of member of parliament. I've always not missed an opportunity to play my role as a member of parliament. And uh, just an important issue which leader referred to: when parliament comes to consideration stage of laws. Mm -hmm not many MPs get enthused or excited about it. Uh, for instance, in the current parliament, I have one promising uh, new member, Roxanne Dafemekwa, who is showing a lot of interest in it. How I wish many other new members of parliament, including continuing members, will demonstrate interest in that particular role or obligation. So uh, I've, I've played my part. I've mm. played my part as a minister of the republic uh, consistently for eight years. So now my job is serving as member of parliament and then working as an opposition party to give birth to government. In any case, the pendulum have to shift and it can only shift between the NDC and the MPP. The pendulum doesn't dance <laughs> forward and back. Okay. It goes, uh, I was I'll ask you at the end when we are wrapping up in a few minutes whether you want to run for president. But leader, uh, <laughs> when I, I said I was going to interview you, people <laughs> ask a question uh, which I think is very relevant, and it has to do with the competences of a member of parliament and qualifications. Many people believe that being a lawyer helps, but you are one member of parliament who only few people know that you are not a lawyer. How did you get such grasp with the law that when you speak, people easily mistake you for one with legal training? Or have you had some secret legal training? <laughs> I haven't. Well, how did you get such grasp with the law to, to encourage people who are not lawyers you read, and who can go you read the law you read it you read a lot mm -hmm. read a lot and when i first came to parliament one person who encouraged me to take parliamentary business seriously um was the late uh amrabo jh mm -hmm. jh benza who was then majority leader was who was then yeah, yeah. yeah. jh benza a man of tremendous experience and competence it was a joy to listen to and in terms of depth of knowledge, he's too tall. Mm. But Usher Champong was very crafty. And when he didn't want <laughs> Parliament to listen to J.J. Benza, Jay Jay Benza. Jay Jay Benza, he would get up, use his standing orders, and shut him down. I see. Uh, technically. Uh, technically, Mr. Speaker. I hope he doesn't man. shut me down. Mr. <laughs> 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 speaker, so and so and so. I read the, re yeah. the, the relevant standing orders and quote the relevant constitutional provision. And the speaker, Justice Anand, would uphold it. Mm. And J.H. would have to, you know, bow out. It was such a crying shame to some of us. And I undertook at that time to acquaint myself with standing orders and also the Constitution. Mm. And also position myself to follow critically and diligently all pieces of legislation that came before us. In no time, I became um, one of the voices of amendment in the house. Mm. 
And I was diligent in all the bills that came. And so I became the reference point, even when we're the minority. So I took myself seriously. Um, what was your real background? Well, I started as a, um, my training as uh, an architect, um, then branched into planning. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, after the first degree, did uh, my second degree in the, same, in the same field. Planning? Yes. I see. So okay. um, it, is, it is how serious you take yourself. So sometimes the, some of my colleagues, lawyers, would even come to consult about what I feel about one or two things. I think that's the way to grow yourself. You are a legislator, mm -hmm. a lawmaker. You can't get it wrong. Indeed, any serious member of parliament is required to be a generalist. You are supposed to know something about everything. So you should take yourself seriously. You should take yourself seriously. Do you wish for us to have a second chamber? Honorable Idrisu alluded to it. Should I we don't. have a second chamber? I don't. And I think the, the, the single chamber is fine. The single chamber we is shouldn't fine. have another chamber. There that is, is an empirical that is study on that. There's, a, there's an empirical study that a double chamber is not suitable for unitary states, especially small unitary states. You don't need that. Hmm. There's an empirical study on that. And when you ask the honorable uh, minority leader what his own preference is, my own preference is for us to go back West to Minister. Westminster. Yeah, yeah. That's, if you that's want to fight it. corruption, yes, yes, this is right one of the that. things that we should pursue. In fact, on this program, we are preparing to have a show here to, sh to look at the distinction between Westminster and the American system. Precisely. And ask people to vote for which one. And that is why... And that is because why it creates more accountability. That is where it. I even disagree a bit with what my colleague said when he said, uh, because people double up as ministers. Mm. They lose focus. In the Westminster, all ministers come from Parliament. Everyone is, uh, they're all there. And because, and because... But that creates more accountability. That creates more accountability. And because they've been in the shadow, and I've always told him that in this, in this world, the greatest events are observed in their shadows. <coughs> we should stay there for a while. Because they've been they in the shadow. to be in the shadow of <laughs> minority. <laughs> <laughs> See, for one to be maybe a minister eventually, mm. he's been a shadow minister yeah. for maybe two terms, three terms, he has learned everything. A lot, yeah. A lot. And so when he's made a minister, he knows he has his hands on everything. It's not like here, where first time is without the relevant copiness in the, in the sector, are pushed to be made ministers. He goes there. And I remember one of our colleagues in the previous administration who was shuffled out after one year. I went to him one He came to me one day and we were discussing. He said, oh, my brother, I went there and just when I was learning, one year. Mm -hmm. One year. The cabinet, the, the, the constitution provides mm -hmm. for cabinet ministers to assist the president in running the, uh, the, the state efficiently first, and two, to assist the president in the evolution of policy. What if the man who goes there tells you that, oh, I'm using one year to learn the rules of that ministry? What policy can he assist for with? For a whole year. For a whole year. He's learning. He's learning. Wow. We should be careful. In the Westminster okay. system, before we are made a minister, You've done the shadow. You've done everything in the shadow. And, and here, in particular, when we are not vetting for specific sectors, it becomes problematic. And it's one of the reasons why we, we find it difficult. So you, you are voting for a constitutional amendment to send us back to the Westminster system. Westminster. Where President Akufado will be a member of parliament and prime minister. Absolutely. And he's right there, the right there Absolutely. in there with you and every morning. What, every, not necessarily every morning. Prime ministers are not. Yeah, but he's the, there. He's available he's there. to be questioned. And he's available to be questioned. And it's the test of superior brains yeah, and yeah. accountability and transparency in everything that we do. And don't forget, in the elections, the electioneering campaigns, because you have a very small terrain, the prime minister having mm. to you know, conduct your own affairs. It's cheaper. For it's the cheaper party. for the party and for the country. Mm. Yes, yes. And it brings down significantly. The millions of dollars. Tendency to. Or on, on the part of one person to be corrupt. But there must have been a reason why we shifted away from Westminster to have the hybrid. I'm sure the oh, We shifted present, in 1960. No, the she president We came back in 69. The shifted president Hilal Leman defeated, took it away. President Hilal Leman defeated by their experience. The other... Yeah. But is that enough? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying they wanted to guided. stabilize. Rawlings wanted we to stabilize the administration. We can have a national conversation on it. Yeah, That's we should have a national conversation. Rawlings wanted to stabilize the, his own administration. Of, yes, uh, so Ghana. to that extent, it has helped us. It has helped to stabilize the state. But 
going now forward. Now we can go. Rawlings mm. sold the seeds of what now is being celebrated 25 Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, well, I'm saying that, that they are stabilized. That's the point he was making, that at that time we needed a stable yeah, it was fragile. Second, it was, it was very stable but, but now good. we are okay. Become a big we have to pay tributes, otherwise your parliamentary services will beat me. I pay tribute to the Honorable Justice D.F. Annan for laying the institutional structure of the Fourth Republic the first speaker of the Fourth Republic, the Honorable Justice D.F. Annan, also to the Honorable, uh, Right Honorable, I should say, for the speakers, Peter Ala Ajete. He provided workspace visibility and they are asserting the independence of parliament, yes, and, and uh, Mr. Ajete really did that. The Honorable, Right Honorable Ebenezer Sechi Hughes provided the visibility of parliament at the regional and district levels and regional parliamentary resource centers. The Right Honorable Justice Joyce Bamford Addo, the only female Speaker of Parliament uh, who is happily still with us, ensuring the effective takeoff of the refurbishment of Job 600. The Right Honorable Edward Do Ajao. She encouraged a lot of consensus building. That's jo Joyce Bamford Addo. Yeah. Bamford Addo. Do Ajao probably is the first person to have become Speaker from the uh, from among we members did. of Parliament. Yes. Yes. Refurbishment of uh, MPs' occupation. Of job After 600. Long service as MP. And currently, we have uh, Professor Aaron Michael Kwe who has begun efforts towards deepening and widening public access. But, Minority Leader, have you repaired your relationship with Professor Michael Kwe? We are. We are working at it. I have my strong reservations about how the Minority Leader, in particular, of every parliament, not just Haruna Idrisu, should be treated. Our right to have our say mm -hmm. is a notorious right granted every political minority in every civilized democracy. <laughs> and when you see the minority leader stand for 10 minutes without being recognized, what respect do you expect my members to have of me as their leader? Don't forget that. Who was on the I floor when you were standing? Uh, some other MP? No, initially the Honorable Muntaka was up. He had some issues with quorum. By my was order 130 to arrest the third reading of a bill, and uh, he didn't. And then, initially, it had to do with questions and supplementary questions. Trust me, I'm assessing the videos of Honorable Che Mensa from the Honorable Hackman through Nana Adwadanku. I'm watching the time, and I expect Professor Okwe to respect that and give me the same right as minority leader. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, uh, one of it, I've had to ask him that, is that the way you were treated when you were minority leader? But I'm sure world will improve. I should say that some respected personalities in the country have spoken to me since. I won't be able to name them, but I've benefited from some motherly and fatherly advice. Uh, one of them uh, quoted the first commandment of the Bible and said, Haruna, to their mother and father. But I think that it's not about Haruna being minority leader. It's not about professor-student relationship. It's about respect to the lead opposition party in parliament having a rightful pl uh, place to play its role as a political minority. But I think that all of us, we've said that we should have a leadership retreat. There are many things that we are still not happy about. Uh, uh, this is not a forum. For instance, if members make a statement, you have to wait for another statement like a counter statement. I don't know where that has happened. Mm -hmm. That is a wrong which has to be corrected. So we have some reservations. We need to work at it. He must allow for more space. I should be fair to him. In some instances, he has. But in many instances, we've not been happy with some of his uh, mm. decisions. But it's something we both can work collectively Let me give uh, the leader the last uh, word. Apart. No, let me just conclude mm. my way. We are working towards improving the standing orders of parliament. Mm. And I've made uh, some uh, submission after visiting Westminster with the leader. In order to deepen the role of the minority, we are looking for a minority day and backbenchers day in the new standing order. So parliament is not just about what will happen. Only minority uh, will business. speak. That day, yes, is dedicated to opposition members of parliament in order to deepen uh, oversight. So we are looking at it. So 25 years, Ghana has ever risen to celebrate its parliamentary democracy compared to many other democracies. We are doing very, very well. Uh, Professor Michael Kwe, I understand, have invited the Senate President of Nigeria to give a lecture on the feet. We expect members of parliament to participate in it and the entire parliamentary or parliament of Ghana uh, community so that we can assess some of the prospects and challenges of 25 years of uh, parliamentary uh, democracy. We can have a conversation as to a new transition from an executive president. I
Yeah. And uh, that, I think that one. there's too much power is given to the president of the republic. Mm -hmm. It's another thing we can look at maybe within the ambit of a West Minister or a better system mm -hmm. of administration. But nonetheless, it should be working to improve the quality of life of the Ghanaian, transparency and accountability. That's why every four years we have uh, mm -hmm. uh, elections conducted in the country. So, Paul, thanks for the opportunity. Peter, you have the last here. word on this uh, program celebrating 25 years of of democracy? Well, I think um, Ghana's parliament has um, come a long way um, from the days of Justice Annan, who as um, a de facto um, vice chairman of the PNDC, was walking a very tight rope in the first parliament. And yet he acquitted himself creditably in growing parliament and winning parliament from the dictatorship that had afflicted the country. Uh, into the days of Peter Rajete, uh, you've, you know, uh, eulogized the um, attributes of all of them. I don't need to go over. But um, there are still a few challenges, uh, some of them constitutional. The inability of Ghana's parliament to initiate bills, uh, I think it's something that we should be looking at. And then the use of the Auditor General, Auditors General everywhere are tools for Parliament to oversee the executive. In Ghana's constitution, we are prohibited from even requesting the Auditor General to look at suspected cases of malfeasance. Don't forget, ultimately, whatever they do, the report should come to Parliament. Because we don't have that is independent. Yes, and um, the financial independence of Parliament itself, and then. There are some of them that are also self-inflicted. The powers that we have vested in our speakers. Um, I think just like he's talking about the presidents, we ourselves have also vested too much powers in our, in our speakers. Mm. We should be looking at it. We can't make the speaker the only person uh, charged with the uh, authority to admit questions, to admit motions. And if he doesn't admit it, he doesn't owe anybody any obligation to explain why he doesn't admit it. Certainly that cannot be uh, transparent. It, it doesn't inure to accountability. The committee system, arguably the best vehicle for every parliament to discharge its functions. How do we resource the committee systems? We haven't done that much. And so going forward, there are a few things that we have to do serious introspection on and broaden the horizon of Ghana's parliament. But all in all, we've done quite well, at least uh, in the continent. <laughs> Ghana's parliament will rank very, very high I believe that if by any assessment we are assessing the, the parliaments of Africa, I want to believe that Ghana's parliament will rank be, uh, among the best three on the continent. Among the best but three? Among the best three. Mm. We, have been, we have been to so many places. Mm. We know how they conduct business. And we know what happens here in Ghana. Yet, there's still a lot of room for improvement. Mm. So let's, let's look at the shortcomings, address them, and I believe the sky will be our limit. So from the leadership of parliament, the majority leader, Oseche Mensa Bonsu, and the minority leader, Renabo Haruna Idrisu. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's follow the programming for the 25th anniversary. Is the Monday event, next Monday event, open to the public, where there's a lecture Absolutely. from the uh, Senate? Where is it happening? At the International Conference Center. Center. Yes. OK, so you can come in and then hear the lecture from is that the head of the Senate. 2 PM on uh, Monday. So Professor Michael Quay will be there. Yes. And, and you will be sitting next to him. Right on the speaker. I sit to his left, and I'm <laughs> jealous of it. That's my entitlement. So that day, the day he put somebody to his left, without justification, apart from the majority leader, I raise issue with that. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching, viewers, and good night. We meet on Thursday. Good night. Right.